What does available mean to you, Paul? I know. I know. I'll tell you what it doesn't mean. Available to everybody. <laughs> Microsoft said yesterday that um, Windows, whatever, 20, 2004, or whatever, the March, May, mall, mall, <laughs> mall, spring update, whatever you want to call it, is now generally available with a, mm -hmm. an asterisk, meaning to some people, but not most. Well, I mean, you know, since we're going to be pedantic about it, it they did make it available. They did. <laughs> you know. Um, there are blockers on certain machines uh, for compatibility reasons. Um, two big issues I had with this. Did we talk about this yesterday? I can't remember. No, I don't think so. Um, w one is that uh, there are several compatibility blockers for this release that never once came up during 15 months of insider testing. Never once. And I, it, it, the, the communication issues that Microsoft has and the insider program in particular are so astonishingly bad that like this is the outcome like i really getting tired of this kind of crap the other issue and this is frankly a big issue too is that it is inexcusable that microsoft's own hardware doesn't get every new release of windows the day that it is released can you mm -hmm. imagine imagine that android 11 ships on august 11th and Google announces that it is available immediately on these Samsung devices, these OnePlus devices, these whatever devices. Uh, but we're not, we don't have it available for our own devices, despite the fact that they were tested heavily and exclusively <laughs> on our own devices during the beta. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 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 Anyway, good morning. How you doing? Yeah, it is morning. Yeah. It's still whatever we're not in, no we're not in june yet not i see that yet. my uh, carrier pigeons have delivered my message to you and your family um yeah. in the form of uh I, I i tried to get them to spell things on the deck but uh they're hard to train what paul is referring to is yesterday <laughs> i was out so we you have to take the deck furniture off the deck to power mm -hmm. wash it and stain it and all that stuff and i go out there to put it back on and there's just bird poop like all over it i'm like you bastards like i just I think the staining of it must have created a shine that from the air looks like a target, you know? <laughs> and they're like, you know, think of. hello, Berlin. <laughs> you know, that's how we Some guy did anyway. on it. Goes, yeah, so I tried putting a, a fake owl on my deck to stop that. And then he said, then they pooped on the owl. <laughs> like, that's great. That's just the bird showing dominance at that point. Like there, that is a malicious act. This might be semi-intentional or we're just, you know, unlucky. But, like, if they're pooping on the owl, that's... I um, This has not come up, I don't think. And uh, uh, i got to just find this thing. So you're familiar with, um, I think his name is, yeah, Mark Rober, right? This is the former NASA guy that yeah, does yeah. the clip things. If you haven't seen this, go to YouTube immediately. Brad, please wait until after the podcast. And he has his latest video is called Building the Perfect Squirrel-Proof Bird Feeder. This is spectacular <laughs> this might literally be the greatest video ever created it is it is awesome and anyone who has ever put a bird feeder in their yard and had to deal with squirrels mm -hmm. will understand the sheer you know uh, just the task that this is mm -hmm. uh, there they are the most incredible animals anyway uh watch this video it is it reminds me of a story of my awesome. youth it's this is going to bring out the, I think the Midwestern in my, my family potentially okay. or not, whatever. So we had a bird feeder in our backyard, much like mm -hmm. many people probably did. My dad liked putting a bird feeder out there. And uh, again, as with all bird feeders, squirrels were an issue. So he put like this contraption on the pole that was just think of it as like a tin can, but it was like, a, it looked nice, but it was like this tin yeah. thing. And like squirrels mm -hmm. could like, in theory, not get up the pole. Well, right. squirrels being squirrels figured out how to do it. So what my dad would do is keep a BB gun in the living room. And so when the squirrels would get near there, he'd shoot the little tin can and make that oh. ping. And then the squirrels would, would go flying. And then they eventually stopped. Yeah, that's only a temp there. Oh, they actually stopped going out there. Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay. They're persistent. Um, they're, they have oh, yeah. little human-like hands and feet, which are <laughs> like human hands. No, I mean, th this video uh, has some incredible gymnastics where like literally they swing around a pole like a gymnast. There's mm -hmm. a a scene where one of them holds on with two of its little claws upside down, fully extended, reaching into the top of the... Uh, you have to watch this. It is... Like I, I said, I can't... I just, I just keep saying this. It's amazing. Please watch this video. 
Oh, well. And speaking of NASA yesterday, we did not get to launch because um, Florida man, or I should say realistically Florida weather, uh, yeah, postponed yeah, that. Yeah. So now we got to wait until Saturday, although the weather Saturday doesn't look great. I heard the guy, there. you know, kind of say, he kind of said pretty early on, like, yeah, the weather's a no-go. <laughs> and yeah. they were like, well, we're going to see what happens. It's like, no, it's not happening. Can you imagine just sitting on top of, I mean, effectively, it's an, a ballistic missile. Mm -hmm. And you, you're just waiting there for, for somebody else to hit the go button. And then they then never do. Oh, not to mention, I mean, the, the many uh, tens of hours that leading up to this where they were suited up, you know, oh, brought yeah. up there. I mean, it's just uh, it's, it's And then, you know, the weather thing has always kind of amazed me. We have all this technology, you know. Um, we can't even land planes in San Francisco when it's too foggy, which blows my mind. But, um, yeah, you want to send something into space with people on the tip of a giant missile? Uh, yeah, maybe. You know, maybe just wait till it's sunny out. Yeah, safety. Safety first. Something. So, anyways, we'll wait and wait and see. Microsoft also released a new Xbox Family Settings app, which is a good mm -hmm. thing. They still... Anybody who's listening to this who actually, I've never personally done this, but I've heard from so many people that I know that it's a pain in the butt. Uh, if you've ever tried to add and remove family members from your family through the Xbox, it's pretty mm -hmm. much a nightmare scenario. I don't know if this is going to fix that, but there you go. Um, this is a big story. I don't know if you saw this on Twitter, but um, apparently Microsoft approached the guy that created apt-get um, because they wanted to use it for their Windows package manager. Mm -hmm. He interviewed... Um, and then they kind of ghosted them mm. and they came up with something that is literally identical to app get. Yeah. Called win get. <laughs> yeah. I and mean, this is like Apple with, well, Apple didn't interview the guy that made Sherlock, but I mean like this kind of theft, I mean, this is what Microsoft used to, this is how the antitrust stuff started for Microsoft mm -hmm. in the nineties. They would invite a company in, they would say, we want to buy you, but we need to look at your technology. They say, sure. My God, you know, buy, Microsoft's going to buy us. We're rich. And then they would just rip it off and release their yeah. own version. You know, um, that's really ugly. So I haven't we'll seen that one yet, but it's totally believable. <sighs> Today's Microsoft though, man, I, I just mm -hmm. doesn't, and it doesn't you know, feel as, good. I'm not saying that it's right, but I mean, you could see that happening and the setback here. Right. So we've been arguing for months, years, whatever it is, Microsoft, big open source contributor, blah, blah, blah. They bought GitHub. You guys don't have to worry about this. They love open source. And, you know, for all of those goons out there that are like, you see, you can't trust Microsoft, see, see, you know, this is the fuel for that. Um, it's just a, it's a huge setback. It's too bad. Yep. I'll need to go, need to go spelunking into that one to see what happened. Has Microsoft said anything about it yet? Not that I, I, it, I just became apprised of this right before we started the show. So hmm. I got another thing. It's not a big deal, but there's an 8-gig version of the Raspberry Pi 4, um, which is only interesting because uh, Raspy and the Linux version that those mm -hmm. guys make is 32-bit and can't address 8 gigs of RAM. <laughs> so 64-bit oh, yeah. Unix and I think Gen 2 Linux uh, distributions that work on the Pi 4, but they're bringing 64-bit to Raspbian, obviously. So 75 bucks you know, for a computer with 8 gigs of RAM. Microsoft... Oh, I just because I looked at my xCloud setup that I have next to me, I realized they announced this week that a couple more games come into Android xCloud. They still have yet to ship anything else for iOS xCloud other than the Master Chief Collection, which is... Apple is literally the worst company on earth, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, at least there's that Master Chief Collection. I don't know. Um, well, I guess it's a set of games, technically. Yeah. 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 So... I don't know. I mean, that's kind of been it. Been a holiday, holiday brouhaha. I'm starting to catch wind of Microsoft opening back up some of their offices worldwide. Hopefully, I have a little bit more. Or maybe Microsoft might actually share just publicly about their plans. But looks like they are starting to gear back up to go at least allow people back into the offices, and they're going to do it on a country by country basis. No surprise there. So, yeah, I mean, even this place where I live is going to go in, into what we call the yellow. I don't know if everyone has the same system, but it's like a red, yellow, green system. Um, that I think is most of the Northeast. I think all of the New England states, New York, Pennsylvania, maybe New Jersey, I don't know. But uh, it's unclear to me right now like what exactly yellow entails. But one of the things that it entails is restaurants can open for like outdoor seating. Mm. Um, which, you know, it's kind of interesting. You sit out in the parking lot, you know, yeah. have a nice where people walking by wearing masks. I think Ohio is getting close to that. And there's actually... the 
a local brewery that has tables outside and that could actually be quite the pro the problem is is that i mean like, oh yeah i'd love to go do that but the problem is is like everybody else is going to want to go do that because we've all just been sitting here drinking alone in our basements crying our sorrows into call of duty and now we want to go do it out yeah you don't want to yep so I was joking with Stephanie that, uh, so this is happening on June 5th. So I'm like, I'll consider this on July 5th. But mm -hmm. the, the other issue is going to be that most places don't have outdoor seating, right? So, yeah, you know, if right. you've been to, you're familiar with the fact that a lot of places just open onto the street and literally like, you know, walk down the streets of Paris, there are mm -hmm. uh, tables right on the sidewalk, you know, very common. And I've always liked that kind because, you know, in places like Paris and much of Europe, um, yeah. there's a kind of a, a living thing. Like that's your living room. You don't have a, you have a tiny apartment. You want to be out in the world, you know, that's where you spend your time. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have here, so uh, some places do, obviously, but I mean, most places don't. So, I, you, you know, you know what's going to happen is like the favorite restaurant we have is on kind of a rural, it's actually in a pretty rural area, but there are a couple houses around and mm -hmm. they'll cordon off part of their parking lot in the street um, and neighbors will complain because there are people outside and they're talking and laughing and clinking glasses and stuff and you know it's going to be a whole new level of um yeah problems so i'm kind of curious to see how that goes down but i'd like to see a shift toward this acceptance of uh more outdoor stuff like i've always thought that was such a great idea even in places where you know like it snows in paris paris is freezing in the winter but mm -hmm. uh, they still manage it yeah yeah we have a couple of places look the the challenge is, is that if people are going to try to keep six feet apart that you need a lot of outdoor space to actually be able to accommodate more than you know, yeah. five tables or something like that, but we'll see. We will yeah. see. Maybe we can all just go live on the sun and just end this thing a little bit faster. Well, SpaceX could just get up in the air, you know, <laughs> first step. Well, we will hope for no cumulus clouds of thunder and lightning this weekend. And then uh, we'll be back. Well, oh, tomorrow's Friday, isn't it? Yep. So we'll see yeah, all of you at 1 p.m. Probably, maybe. I have normal hair by tomorrow if I can. Thank <laughs> you.